I had to leave. I didn't know why. <laughs> so then again, logging in took some time. So nice to see all of you. Welcome back. Om Ajnana Timirandha Siddhyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurud Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swam Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunni Vadi Paschati Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram 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 Mariyadha Purushottam Ramachandra Bhagavan Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Shana. Welcome everyone. Hare Krishna. My obeisances to each one of you for kindly participating this morning in America and this evening in India. Vansha Kalpatru Bheshcha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Paditanam Pavanit Bhya Vaishnu Bhya Namo Namaha. Every day we should make sure that we make a little endeavor, extra endeavor um, in hearing, chanting and remembering Krishna more than what we did the day before. Our chanting, our charity, and our study of Shastra, these are three things which we should continue to increase. We should never feel in any way that we have done a lot. The number of rounds that we chant, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, um, the Shastra that we read, and the charity that we give. These are three things that Chanakya Pandit has said in his Niti Shastra, that one should... Never feel satiated that, oh, I have done enough. There's always scope to do more. There's always scope to give more charity. There's always more scope to study the Vedic literature, the books of Srila Prabhupada. And there's always scope to chant more and more and more the holy names of the Lord. There was one very great soul in North India. He had chanted over, I believe, 10 billion holy names of Ram. 10 billion holy names in his life. And while he was departing, he had he was leaving his body, he had tears in his eyes. What was what were the tears for? Pain. The pain that was there in his heart was the fact that, O oh, Sri Ram, your name is so sweet. How sweet is your name? But unfortunately, I couldn't chant enough. This was the pain in his heart. Chitna madhur apka naam hai, hey Prabhu, hum utna to japi nahi paaye. We couldn't chant the holy name uh, to the extent of the sweetness of the holy name. We couldn't match up with our sincerity. My Lord, please give me one more birth, the devotee was crying as he was leaving his body. Give me one more birth and I will promise you, I will try to chant much more than what I have. <laughs> The holy name of the Lord is the eternal reality. 
कल्याणानाम निधानम कलिमल मथनम पावनम पावनानाम इट हैज बीन डिस्क्राइब बाय शिल रूप गोस्वामी इन अ कंपाइलेशन दैट कल्याणानाम निधानम द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल ऑस्पिशियसनेस इन आवर लाइफ इज द होली नेम एंड कलिमल मथनम पावनम पावनानाम द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल ऑस्पिशियसनेस इज इन द होली नेम the most powerful uplifter of the consciousness is the holy name and kali mala mathanam he destroys all ill effects of kali yuga the holy name therefore it is said vishrama sthanam ekam kavivara vachasam jeevanam sajjananam the holy name is the life of the sadhus and at the same time it is the food that the sadhus constantly keep munching in their mouth while going back home back to god it <laughs> it's a long route going from here back home back to goloka or back to vaikuntha so just like people when they travel they carry food they carry something or the other some carry some khakra or chevda some carry some fruits some carry some lunch right so while traveling they carry something to munch what do the sadhus carry they carry the holy name on this long journey going back home back to god it vishram sthanam ekam the holy name of shri hari is the only place of vishram of peace of rest of solace vishram sthanam ekam it is the only sthan the only place of vishram where the soul can find complete solace and peace vishram sthanam ekam kavivara vachasam jeevanam sajjanana the holy name has stolen the tongue of all the poets and of all the spiritualists which means everyone is continuously chanting the holy name and jeevanam sajjanana this is the life of all great souls holy name of shri ram is the root for the tree of spiritual success never should we complain that i am so lusty i am so greedy i am so angry i am full of all bad qualities yes we are in the darkness because we have not approached the switch of the light if we don't approach the switch the light switch and we complain there is so much darkness in the room there is no need to complain just go and touch the switch there's immediate light so the more we keep the holy name of shri ram on our tongue the more is the light of transcendental wisdom and knowledge lit up in the room of our heart we don't have to cry humne ye kiye hain bahut paap kiya hai that is the past but from this moment we will try to chant as much as we can whatever work we are doing we can always keep the holy name of ram so simple only two syllables how easy can it get <laughs> ajamil had to chant four syllables narayana still he did it we find four vedas to be difficult so the lord has taken one syllable each from each veda and given us four syllable narayan naam narayana that's it gajendra chanted narayana narayana khil guru bhagavan namaste ajamil chanted narayana kulashekhar alwar in the mukunda mala stotra he says he martya paramam hitam shrunutavo vakshami sankhepatah samsarar navamapadurmi bahulam samyak pravishya sthita nana jnanam apase chetasi namo narayana ityamum mantram sa pranamam pranam sahitam pravarthaya dvamuho O living entity who is stuck in the deep ocean of suffering in this world, you have gone into this ocean to enjoy, but you are splashed and splashed in all directions with the waves of suffering, with the waves of sorrow. And the only way by which we can free ourselves is, Kulishekar Alwar has said, forget of forget about all your solutions. Put your hands up. and loudly call on the names of narayana he will uplift you he will pull you out of the ocean that's it narayana akhil guru bhagavan namaste but then we are also lazy in kali yuga we say my lord four syllables is too much my tongue is too thick to vibrate four syllables so the lord has vibrated three syllables in the form of govinda chant govinda and you get everything <laughs> Govinda kirtayet na samam shatam shayhi. Somebody can perform. The Skanda Puran describes somebody can perform hundred thousand yajnas. Somebody can give lot of gold mountains of charity. Somebody can bathe in the Ganga for the day of Brahma. Still, it doesn't equal 
one utterance of the name Govinda. How amazing. So therefore you see whether it's North India or South India, any part of India, the word, the name Govinda is very com common. In South India also you can go to uh, Thirumala Tirupati and they're constantly chanting Govinda, Govinda, right? <laughs> the name Govinda is very common. So Krishna's made it so easy from four syllables Narayana to three syllables Govinda. But then we still are complaining. Go is easy, the is easy, but win is difficult because Govinda, there is a Samyukta Akshar, there is a combination syllable. Govinda, half na with a full da. Govinda. My Lord, can you make it easier? So the Lord has made it even more easier and he has given two syllable Ram now. <laughs> Rama, that's it. No Samyukta Akshar. <laughs> Just Ra and Ma. I remember once when I was in Vrindavan, I was doing by the, by the blessings of the Lord, by his mercy, by his arrangement, I was doing Vrindavan Parikrama and I met one sadhu there. He was constantly sitting by the side of the road and on a notebook he was writing Ram, 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 continuously and such small aksharas, small syllables. So in one whole page, he had written so many hundreds and hundreds of Ram, 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 small syllables. And that was his vrat, Nam Lekhan, to write the names. So I looked at him and I said, oh dear Baba, uh, you're writing the holy name. So he wanted to say yes, but his vrat was, as he's writing the name of Ram, he, he looks at the syllable and he says Ram, then next Ram, then Ram. Nothing else apart from the name of Ram. He's looking at the syllables of Ram, he's writing the syllables of Ram, and he's uttering the syllables Ram, he's hearing the syllables now. Can you imagine? The holy name is vibrating throughout his consciousness. And I, like a fool, went and interrupted him. So now he has to say, he wants to say yes, but at the same time, he doesn't want to break his breath. You know what he was doing? So he was writing Ram, 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 Ram. And suddenly he looked at me and he said, Ram, 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 Ram. So his breath continued and he nodded and said, yes, that's what he was doing. <laughs> so we can see the holy name of Ram is the most powerful tool to keep on our tongue. The syllables you can even remember in your mind. You're going somewhere and you can remember the syllables Rama in your mind. And it is so powerful. When you say Rama, it can refer to Sita Rama. It can refer to Parashurama. It can refer to Balarama. And at the same time, Ra means Radharani. And Ma means Madhava or Madhusudan. So by saying Rama, you also get the benefit of chanting the name of Radha and Krishna. <laughs> So beautiful. Ra, ra akar ucharana matrena. Just by saying Ra, Lord Shiva becomes so pleased. In the uh, Padma Puran, also quoted in the Shat Sandarbhas by Srila Jiva Goswami, Lord Shiva's attachment to chanting of Ram has been described. Raka radini namani shunvato devi jayate pritir me manasi nityam rama nama vishankaya. Lord Shiva tells Mother Parvati, as soon as someone says Ra, even to say something else, let's say, for example, um, you want to say some other word which starts with the syllable Ra, okay? Not Ram, anything else, even something material. Like in Telugu, for example, where I remember when I was in one home, the father was calling the child. The child was playing in, in, the, in the backyard of the house. And in Telugu, the, the father was calling the child, Ikra, come here. He's calling him, come here. So I was, I heard the word Ra, which means to come. And I remembered this verse because Lord Shiva tells Mother Parvati that <laughs> if someone just says Ra, to name something else, Ra akar adini namani, just by hearing that, Shunvato Devi Jayate, Pritirme Manasi Nityam. Oh Parvati, Lord Shiva is saying, if someone just says Ra, to hint to something else. In my heart, joy starts bubbling, thinking that the next syllable that they're going to say is going to be Ma. Rama Nama Vishankaya, with the anticipation that very soon he's going to say Ma and complete it to Rama. 
Lord Shiva is saying, I feel so happy just by hearing the syllable Ram. <laughs> so this is the glory of Ram now. The name of Ram we have. We have the holy name of Ram with us. How powerful, how wonderful, how glorious. Mother Sita sitting in Ashok Vatika in separation from Ram was chanting Ram now. Vibhishan living in Lanka surrounded by so many Rakshasas separated from Sri Ram was chanting Ram now. Shabari sitting in her hut in separation from Ram was chanting the name of Ram. And you see in all these three cases, they were all separated from Ram. They were all chanting the holy name of Ram and Ram walked his way to that devotee. Ram came to Vibhishan and took care of him. Ram came to Shabari and blessed her. Ram personally came to Mother Sita and rescued her. Because all three of them were surrendered to the chanting of the holy name of Ram. How wonderful. This name has appeared in our life. This Ram Nam has descended from Nitya Ayodhya Dham in the lives of all of us. Just by hearing this name, Yan Nama Shruti Matrena Puman Bhavati Nirmala. Even if somebody doesn't chant this name, somebody simply hears the utterance of Ram. Then what happens? Yan Nama Shruti Matrena Puman Bhavati Nirmala. Bhagavatam describes just by hearing the holy name, the heart becomes cleansed. Just by hearing. Then what to speak of uttering? And then what to speak of loudly chanting? What to speak of continuously chanting? What to speak of chanting with a prayerful mood? And then what to speak of chanting at the time of death? Haribo. <laughs> this great treasure is there in our life. Why should we worry? Why should we worry? Surpanakha had Ram without Ram now. She was sent back. <laughs> but Vibhishan, Jatayu, Shabari, they all had Ram Nam. And Ram came to them. For Jatayu, Ram came. For Shabari, Ram came. For Sita Devi, Ram came. For all these great personalities who didn't have Ram, but they had the name of Ram, Ram came to them. But Surpanakha had Ram, but no chanting of the holy name, she was sent back. <laughs> so between Ram and the holy name of Ram, if we even see Ram, but if we don't chant the name of Ram and our heart is not cleansed with devotion, with the soap water of devotion, the dirt of our heart is not cleansed. We will not be able to recognize Ram. We see uh, um, Kumbhakarana, we see Ravana, we see Kamsa, we see Hiranyakashipu, they all, Shishupal, they all saw the Lord, but they did not chant the holy name. Therefore, they could not recognize the Lord. They couldn't see the beauty of the Lord. They couldn't appreciate the glory of the Lord like how the devotees appreciate. On the other hand, you see those devotees who chant the holy name. The Lord appears to them and they can have nice vision, nice darshan. So we must understand that Ram is like a kite. Patang. Makar Sankranti ke din jo patang sat. Ye krida to hoti hai, prasid hai. The kite flying festival is very famous. So Sri Ram is like a kite. And if you see the kite up in the sky at a distance, it seems like this kite is moving by the breeze of the wind and it's independently moving. When you see from a distance, you see a kite. It seems that the kite is very far away. It seems that it is independently moving and it seems that it is so up there. Hmm? But however, if you see closely, there is a person who is holding a thread which is controlling the kite. And that person can either pull the thread and bring the kite close or let the kite, uh, the thread loose and have the kite fly in the sky. So in this example, the person who is holding the thread is the devotee. The thread is the holy name of Ram. And the kite is Sri Ramachandra, which means if a devotee lovingly holds on to the holy name of the Lord, then that kite like Lord who seems to be independent. Actually, he can be controlled by the string of love. You can see Mother Yashoda controls Krishna. You can see Hanuman controls Sri Ram on the power of his devotion. You can see Prahlad Maharaj controlled the Lord and made him appear through a pillar, which none of us can. 
So for us, the Lord seems to be like a kite very far away, up there, moving independently by the breeze of his will. But actually, it takes a devotee like Prahlad holding the string of the holy name, continuously holding. And that causes the kite to be attracted and controlled. When Prahlad wants, he can invoke Narsinga. And when he wants, he can let Narsinga go back. However, even after holy, holding on to this thread, if the thread gets cut, which means if we stop chanting, then we become the kite. We see that the kite again becomes independent. <laughs> so the greatest treasure, the greatest wealth that we have in our life, all of us, is the holy name of the Lord. There is no higher gain. People are crazy after money. Okay, how much money can we have? Let's say 1 crore, 5 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores, 100 crores, 1000 crores. Again, what will we do? We are still going to eat the same three rotis. Okay, well, maybe we'll um, eat at some restaurant. How many days can we eat? The stomach goes for a toss. How much can we enjoy? Imagine someone having... Um, samosas every day. He gets bored because that's not the solution for success. That's not the solution for happiness. Just having and over collecting material things doesn't make one happy. Think about it. There are people in this world who have much more than what we have. Are they actually happy? They are searching for joy somewhere else. We think only if I can become famous. Only if I can become rich, only if I was handsome, only if I was whatever, intelligent or whatever, whatever our idea of happiness is. But there are people in this world who have what we are searching for and their search continues, which means that is not the answer. Those who don't have money, they feel I wish I can make one lakh rupees a month. But there are people in this world who are making five lakh rupees a month. And what is their idea? I wish I can make it to 10 lakh a month. You ask those who are making 10 lakh rupees, they will say, I have not growth jada hua nahi. I have not had growth. I wish I can have more. Let me go to America. Let me go to Europe. Let me start a business. Let me have two jobs. Let me also invest in real estate. Let me also do this. But there are people who have all of that. And now you ask them. Then they say, I wish I can have something else. And then there are those who have this and that and you go and ask them, interview them. I am looking for this. You have it. Are you happy? They will say no. They will say no. And if they're saying, yes, I am happy, they are lying. <laughs> they are lying. Because you will see, you have to pay with your health. You have to pay with uh, all, all parameters. Either children are not born, or if children are born, they are not physically or mentally uh, okay. If let's say they are also fine, you will see your parents in their old age are having some problem. Okay, if they are also fine, then you will see your spouse is having some problem. Let's say if that is also fine, you will see you will have uh, occasional headaches or stomach pain. What is the use of having so much money and so much material opulence if our search for happiness continues? But on the other hand, you will see those who are chanting the holy name and they are serving the Lord. They may not have so many material things, but they have so much power in this world that forget about they trying to be happy. They are happy. Whoever comes in contact with them, they also start becoming happy. How amazing. Swayam ka to mangal hoi gya. Jo unke jivan mein aata hai, unka mangal ho jata hai. That person becomes fortunate. This is the root of all success, the chanting of the holy name, coming in contact with Sri Ram, coming in contact with the holy name, coming in contact with Bhakti. This is the root of all success. Dear devotees, this name of Sri Ram has been described. Brahmam bodhi samudbhavam kalimalam pradvam sannam chavgayam shrimad shambhu mukendu sundaravare samshobhitam sarvada samsaramaya bheshajam sukhakaram shri janaki jivanam dhanyaste kritino pibanti satatam shri ramanamamritam. Aha, aha. 
<laughs> Glories of the holy name of Sri Ram. It says, Brahmam Bodhi Samudbhavam Kalimalam Pradvam Sanam Chavyayam. When the milk ocean in the famous Samudra Manthan Leela, right? When the milk ocean was churned, you saw that nectar came out. Nectar came out. But it first didn't come out. The first thing that came out was poison. First thing that came out was poison. Later nectar came out. And how much nectar came out? Only one pot. <laughs> which Mohini Murthy had to come. Danvantri got and Mohini Murthy distributed. However, when the four Vedas, which are like oceans, they are churned. No poison comes out. Only nectar comes out. And not one pot. An ocean of nectar comes out in the form of the holy name of Ram. <laughs> the, the holy name is the nectar that comes when you churn the milk ocean of the Shastra. If somebody studies the Shastra and doesn't continuously chant the holy name, what have they gained? And if somebody continuously chants the holy name, then all Shastras will appear in their heart. Vede, Rama, Yane, Chaiva, Purane, Bharate, Tatha, Ado, Antecha, Madhyecha, Hari, Sarvatra, Giyate. In the beginning, middle and end of all Shastra, only the holy name is glorified. And look at this beautiful contrast. The milk ocean is churned and poison comes out. But when the Shastric ocean is churned, nectar comes out. And in both cases, Lord Shiva is drinking. <laughs> the milk ocean, when the poison came out, Lord Shiva drank. But he drank only once. But when the Vedas are churned and the holy name of Ram comes out, that nectar Lord Shiva continuously holds in his throat. Lord Shiva is the greatest preacher of the holy name of Ram. Shri Rama Rama Rameti Rame Rame Manorame Sahasra Nama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane. Lord Shiva loves the holy name of Ram so much that when this nectar ocean of Ram Nam comes out, Lord Shiva drinks it completely. Keeps it on his tongue, keeps it on his throat. His whole body is vibrating with only Ram. This name is so simple to chant. So simple to chant. One can chant millions and millions of Ram Nam in no time. Ram 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 It's like just switch on the machine, it continues. One minute, how many names we can chant? Can you imagine every breath, every minute of our life, how much the holy name can give us? And it is described. Kalimalam Pradvam Sanam Javyayam. This nectar of Ram Nam destroys the ill effects of Kali Yuga. And Avyayam, it is a medicine which is not bitter. It is eternal. It never gets expired. <laughs> Samshobitam Sarvada. Always on the tongue of Lord Shiva. Always on the throat of Lord Shiva. And Sri Janaki Jeevanam. This was the life of Mother Sita. When her life, Sri Ram was away. Therefore, dhanyaste, kritino, pibanti, satatam. All glories to those tongues. How fortunate are those personalities whose lives, whose tongues are constantly vibrating? Sri Ram Amritam. The nectar, the oceanic nectar of the holy name of Ram. <laughs> How beautiful. Dear devotees, our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas have said in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the name of Ram, as we mentioned, uh, Ra is Radharani and Ma is Madhusudana. Dvayo Vigraha Samyogat Rama Nama Itikila. By chanting Ram, one gets the benefit of calling Radha and Krishna together. One syllable each. So therefore, even in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, when Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare, our Acharyas explain it refers to Radha Raman. So if you say Ram, you also get the benefit of chanting Radha Raman. Very beautiful Shamasundar of, of Vrindavan. How much nectar is there in these two syllables? Rama. Therefore, Prati Shwase is a Vishwasam. Ramam Smara Dine Dine. Punaha Shwasa Na Vishwaso Agamishyati Vanava. It has been written by the great poets that Prati Shwase is a Vishwasam. In every breath, with confidence, 
Ramam smara dine dine. Chant the name of Ram. Why? Punaha shwasa na vishwaso. There is no guarantee whether we will get another breath. Agamishyati va. Whether the breath will come. Nerva or may not. We don't know when we will breathe the last breath of our life. So therefore with every breath, Sir Vishwasam, with faith, one must chant the holy name of Ram. Dear devotees, we spoke of two things in the last 30 minutes. One, the nature of this world, irrespective of how much ever we have, it never satisfies us. And second, how connection with the holy name of Ram, connection with Sri Ram fulfills us, even if we have nothing. These are the two things that have come together in the life of Dasharat Maharaj. <laughs> Yesterday we saw how Dasharat Maharaj had everything material. With the description of Ayodhya, can you imagine? <coughs> the city is so opulent. The citizens are so divine. The Brahmanas are so well-versed. The Kshatriyas are so skilled. The weapons are so perfect in all ways possible. Even the demigods wanted, the devatas and the devis want to be in Ayodhya. Ayodhya does, is never troubled by heat or cold, summer, winter, rain, by hunger, by sleep, by thirst, by poverty, by any violence possible. And it is um, ever victorious. It is a city which cannot be defeated, Ayodhya, where first of all, there are no fights. And even if there is a fight, Ayodhya never loses. That level of um, prowess and power the city has. Even after being the king, worshipped, famous all through the three worlds, Dasharat Maharaj's heart was vacant. This should convince us that yes, we must live our lives to be in this world and do our job and make the money to pay the rent and the bills and the mortgage and the loan. Yes, we must do that. But we must understand that will never make us happy. Just having more money, being more famous will never make us happy. Being more handsome, being more fairer, being more exquisite in our features will never make us happy. Dasharat Maharaj had it all. You can see in the Mahabharat, Duryodhan had it all. You can see in the Rama and Ravan had it all, materially speaking. But without connection to the Supreme Lord. Everything is like a zero. Connection to Sri Hari is that one. Everything else is just the zero. So if you don't have the one, even if you write 13, 14 zeros, it's still a big zero. But if you have that one, then with every zero, the, the strength of the number increases. So there are two things, dear devotees. One, to make a living. And second, to learn to live. Material education teaches us to make a living. Spiritual education teaches us how to live. When people think, what is the need of chanting Ram Nam? What is the need of being spiritual? What is the need of becoming a devotee? Well, we will only have a living, but we will not know how to live in that living. <laughs> but however, if both this culture is given of how to chant the holy name, it also helps in calming the mind. It's also meditative. It makes us uh, very sharp in our intellect with the right decision making and of course spiritually it helps us develop love for God and be grateful and see his hand in everything and not be proud for our success and not to blame others for the defeat. Material education teaches us how to make a living and spiritual education teaches us how to live in that living. It is like you have to oil the car, you have to feed some petrol or diesel or whatever and at the same time, you have to feed the driver. You have to give him roti, sabji, dal, rice. So he is also well fed. If the car is well kept, but the driver is hungry, how can he drive? Right? So spiritual education is like feeding the soul, which is the driver. And material education is like making a living, which is oiling the car, which is taking care of this body. Both are needed. But between the two, spiritual education is more important. In, in a laptop in, in a, or in a device, computer device, you need hardware and software both. Imagine if hardware is fantastic and software is corrupted, what is the use? <laughs> That's the materialistic education that we are given. Make more money, live, you know, opulently. That's like having very good hardware. 
But without spiritual education, the software is corrupt. But if the software is good and the hardware is good, the person will be perfect. So that should be our aim. Dasharat Maharaj in the pages of Valmiki Ramayana has everything material, has everything good. But however, he feels a vacancy in his heart. How to solve this? We find in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam also, Chitra Ketu Maharaj, he had everything. He absolutely had everything, <laughs> but his heart was still vacant. I wish I had a son. <laughs> Nobody's happy. Everyone is trying to search for something that they don't have. But those who have that, they still continue to search for something that they don't have. And in this way, Maya has kept everyone locked up in this world. Everyone. Dear devotees, this world is a slaughterhouse. Absolutely, yes. This world is a slaughterhouse. Each one of us is going to get slaughtered by the knife of time, death. Some are dying today. As we are discussing this, some are dying. Some are going to die today. Some will die tomorrow. Some will die the next year. Some the year after. Some five years from now. Some ten years from now. But there's not one person who has come with a belt of immortality in this world. I am going to be immortal. Each one of us has come with an expiration date, which means in short, this whole world is a slaughterhouse where each one of us is going through the belt of slaughter through death. And it's interesting as one goat gets slaughtered, the other goat are all well fed with grass so that they don't look at the other goat who's getting slaughtered. So they are busy eating their grass and thinking, I am so happy. Actually, that goat is happier because he's having little more grass. I wish I can collect little more grass, then I will be happy too. And in this way, the joy that we are all getting in life, better job, more money, bigger house, everything. It's like Maya is feeding us fresh green grass to keep the goat of our consciousness absorbed in these, th in these things, not letting us see that the knife is coming very soon. But those who are intelligent, those who have woken up, according to Shastra, they see what is going on. Ahani ahani bhutani gachanti yama mandiram sheshasthavaram ichanti kim ascharyam atahaparam. When Yudhishthir Maharaj in the pages of the Mahabharata was asked, what is the most astonishing thing? He said, ahani ahani bhutani. Moment after moment, everyone goes through the, the door of death. Well, that's a nice, that's a nice term, the door of death. Never thought of it. <laughs> Yudhishthira Maharaj answered, everyone's going through the door of death. But those who are still behind, those who haven't entered yet, they think it happened to him, it happened to her, it happened to them, won't happen to me. I won't make the mistake that they made. Well, he got a heart attack because he was drinking. Oh, oh he had a liver failure because he was drinking. He had a heart attack because he was obese. Look, I am neither obese nor do I drink, so I am safe. Everyone's thinking and calculating like this. What is astonishing is all of us think that it won't happen to me. What has happened around won't happen to me. But it's actually astonishing that each one of us has to go through that door of death. This world is a slaughterhouse where everyone is going through the knife of death. And while we are safe, eating the green, fresh grass of joy in this world, we feel how happy I am. But we must understand why should we go through this belt of slaughter every life? Not needed. By chanting the holy name, Krishna promises, Tesham aham samudhartam mrityu samsara sagarat. I will come and lift you up. <laughs> I will come and lift you up. <laughs> when Krishna tries to lift us up, you know, it's like uh, when, when a little child tries to become very tall, he can't. But when the father comes and lifts that child on his shoulder, now the child becomes the leader. The child being so small can feel what it feels at six and a half feet tall because the father is so tall and he's lifted. Similarly, all of us are so small. We are little living entities. But when God lifts us up, then we become, uh, we have the power to have that vision uh, which can even bless others who come in contact with us. So in this way, Dasharat Maharaj, who's amid so much material opulence, he's feeling something is missing in my life. 
I wish I can make that little vacancy uh, fulfilled. And what was that? Tasya tuvevam prabhavasya dharmatnyasya mahatmanaha sudhartham tapyamanasya nasid vamsha kara sutaha. Valmiki Muni says that although Dasharat Maharaj was majestic, righteous, magnanimous, he had no son to perpetuate the race, to carry it on for him. And at this point, Dasharat Maharaj was thinking, why don't I perform a nice yajna, a nice Ashwamedha yajna and invoke the blessings of all the devatas? I should make a sacrifice uh, in consultation with all the brahmanas and all the ministers, bring in all the family priests and uh, perform a yajna by which I should have a son. As Dasharat Maharaj is thinking like this, Sumantra, one of his ministers, as we previously mentioned, he goes and brings in all the sages. He brings in uh, Vashishta Muni and also he brings in the other ministers like Suyadnya and Vamadev and, and Jabali Rishi and so many other sages, Kashyapa Muni. He brings in everyone, all those who know how to solve the situation and all those who have mastery over the Shastras. Dasharat Maharaj offers obeisances and brings all of them together with very um, meaningful and prayerful and very gracious, humble words of submission. He tells them that I have no happiness in my life. And that is, I feel, because I have no son to carry on the Raghuvansha. So can we perform a yajna by which we can get a son? I need to have, uh, I need to, I, I want all of you to deliberate on this situation and find a solution for me. The Brahmanas along with Vashishtamuni, they all heard the king out and they said, yes, certainly, sadhu, sadhu, yes, certainly, O king, your decision is wonderful. It's uh, laudable, appreciable that we definitely need an heir to the throne. We need a king who can carry on your legacy. So, O king, may you instruct us and we will collect the right articles for this sacrifice. And certainly we will offer our prayers so that you may have the right uh, son with all good qualities and may he carry on this legacy. As Dasharat Maharaj listens to these words full of uh, confidence and affirmation, his eyes are lit up with joy and with delight he says, yes, yes, I instruct and I give the command May the articles be procured for uh, such a yajna by which uh, may all my superiors be pleased, may my pitris, my forefathers be pleased, and may a wonderful son be born who can carry on this legacy. But it should be a yajna which is performed uninterrupted and it should be performed in the best possible way. It should be performed by the best brahmanas and there should be no flaw. There should be no defect. Dasharat Maharaj said, there are demons and very intelligent Brahmarakshasas or ghosts who look out for faults, who look out for flaws, who look out for some loopholes, mistakes in a sacrifice so that they can come and infiltrate and spoil the whole purpose. And then the sacrifice doesn't bear any fruit and the person who's performing the sacrifice, he also gets some reactions. So please read through the Shastra and perform it the way it is done. So it almost looked as if Indra in the royal court of heaven was ordering the Devatas and Dasharat Maharaj looked like that as he was giving instruction to everyone. All the Brahmanas, all the ministers, they offered their obeisances to Dasharat Maharaj and they said, yes, so be it, O King. We will make all arrangements. We will uh, do it as enjoined, as explained in the Shastra, as directed by the officiating Brahminical priests. We will have it done. Then having said this, the king uh, folded his palms and, and, and bid goodbye from his ministers and he entered his inner chamber, his inner apartment. As Dasharat Maharaj enters his inner apartment, he uh, looks at all his wives and he mentions to them uh, his decision. He said, we are going to commence or begin a very wonderful, religious, purposeful uh, yajna to obtain a son. Listening to these words of Dasharat Maharaj, the face of all these wives, it lit up. And Valmiki Muni very beautifully says, Tasam te nati kantena vachane na suvarchasam 
ಮುಖ ಪದ್ಮಾನ್ಯ ಶೋಭಂತ ಪದ್ಮಾನೀವ ಹಿಮಾತ್ಯಯೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಮುನಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೈವ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಶರಥ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲುಕ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಪೋಯಟಿಕ್ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಮುನಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಫೇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇ ಡಿನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿಂಟರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಶ್ರಿವಲ್ಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಡಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ವಿಂಟರ್ ನೈಟ್ ಹೌ ಎವರ್ ದಶರಥ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಾಸ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಯರ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಟು ಓಪನ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೈಟ್ how beautiful our shastra teaches us how to convey with the right words with the philosophical depth uh, with the poetic embellishment the embellishment and at the same time with so many figures of speech the right metaphorical examples and keeping everything philosophical yet at the same time very sweet at this point as dashrath maharaj uh, tells his wives about uh, the plan it is described by valmiki muni <clears throat> the charioteer sumantra he comes to the king and he tells dasharath maharaj in private that he has heard the advice given by the brahmanas sanat kumaro bhagavan purvam kathitavan katham rishinam sannidhau rajan tava putragamam prati Sumantra speaks to Dasharath Maharaj and he says, O King, the great sage Sanat Kumar out of the four Kumaras in the past has narrated a story about the Raghuvansha and he speaks about how the dynasty is going to continue. He speaks of all the future generations of the Sun dynasty or the Raghuvansha, the Suryavansha, which is the dynasty of Dasharath Maharaj. So Dasharath Maharaj becomes very amazed Sanat Kumar one out of the four Kumaras in the past has already spoken of our dynasty and how the future generations are going to come so Dasharath Maharaj holds the hand of Sumantra and asks him did they speak of me having children did they speak that there's going to be a king after me what has Sanat Kumar spoken please tell me everything in detail Sumantra continues he said Sanat Kumar spoke to the sage that the great sage kashyapa will have a son called vibhandaka and vibhandaka will have a son by the name rishishringa now please remember this name rishishringa very very wonderful and very famous personality uh, whose presence is found in the pages of valmiki ramayana dasharath maharaj wants to know more about this rishishringa please don't lose track of the flow of the discussion the charioteer is speaking to the king about what sanat kumar spoke to the sages about the future dynasty of the raghuvansha where sanat kumar starts speaking that there was a great sage by the name kashyapa who had a famous son called vibhandaka and it was prophesized that he would have a son by the name rishishringa now rishishringa the son of vibhandaka he grew up in the forest he was always moving with his father and it's quite interesting that vibhandaka he wanted his son rishishringa to always be with him deep into the forest and never meet any man or woman of this world why vibhandaka did not want his son rishishringa to be contaminated or polluted he wanted his son rishishringa to be a naishtika brahmachari naishtika brahmachari is someone who has 100% semen retention all his life never ever ever indulges in anything sexual and doesn't lose his vital energy ever so the father vibhandaka wanted his son rishishringa to be such a wonderful sage and as a result in his over protective mentality he never let his son meet anyone rishishringa only knew one person in the whole world and that is his father <laughs> and deep into the forest he didn't find any other human being let alone women he never he never even knew there was a uh, gender as the feminine gender o dashrath sumantras continues that this great sage rishishringa he is celebrated in the three worlds for practicing lifelong celibacy he worshiped the fire god agni 
he was always with his father and living his life in such a saintly way. However, there was a change of, uh, uh, let's say, a turn in his life, change of destiny. There was a powerful king by the name Romapad. He was mighty and celebrated and he was living in a country called Anga. Due to some <clears throat> violation of code of conduct by the king, Romapad, a very terrible, dreadful drought, famine and drought, they come together many times. This was a drought and there was absolutely uh, no consideration of food and water in the kingdom. So everyone was struggling and the king was afraid that what's going to happen to all the subjects and all the living beings in his kingdom. How has this drought, uh, this drought got in such a grief stricken circumstance in the whole kingdom? How is it that we can be free? Asked Romapad. He was asking the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas in his kingdom, they advised, O oh, king, there's a very great sage by the name Vibhandaka. And his son, Rishi Sringa, is a celibate Brahmachari. He is uh, perfect in all ways. O king, if you can only bring that Rishi Sringa here into your kingdom, worship him and get him married to your daughter, Shanta. There will be rain in your kingdom. And those who don't have water to drink will have abundant water. Which means, in short, you have to break his Brahmacharya and bring him into the kingdom and give your daughter Shanta in marriage to Rishi Shringa. So when Romapad, King Romapad heard this, he said, how can such a great celibate Brahmachari be got here? And how can I convince him to get married to my daughter Shanta? How is it even possible? So the ministers, they had a brief discussion and um, they told the king, ah, there is a plan that we have made. We want the sages to execute this. So when the sages were told of the plan, the sages said, we won't do this. Breaking somebody's brahmacharya and attracting them to a woman and getting them to the kingdom. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do. So the minister said, OK, no harm. We have another way by which we can bring this sage under our control. Let us send some women deep into the forest. Let us send some women who are very beautiful, who have nice ornaments, who are picking flowers in the forest, who are very slender, uh, very exquisitely beautiful, very wonderful in their character. We will send some women like that deep into the forest, attract the mind of Rishi Shringa and bring him into the courtroom. The king thought of this. He said, sounds like a good plan. But what if the father Vivandaka gets to know of this, that we have stolen his son and broken his vow of celibacy and gotten him here? How is this going to work? The minister said, we must think of a plan by which we can pacify the father Vibhandaka so that he doesn't curse us. Shortly enough, as planned, dear devotees, they send some beautiful courtesans or women who are uh, expert in attracting alluring men as mistress. These women dressed up like sadhus or sadhvis, like ascetics with their hair well made and we don't have to get in the details. You know what I'm talking about. So they went deep into the forest um, and they were picking flowers and fruits and berries and they were speaking very sweet words. And when Vibhandaka, the father, was out of the, the hut or the hermitage and Rishi Shringa was all by himself, they went and spoke to him. They spoke very kind words and in no time, like this, with a snap of the fingers, blink of an eye, lust was inflicted in the heart of the sage Rishi Shringa. Such a great sage who had the vow of lifelong celibacy now was being attacked by the arrows of Cupid. These women, these girls, they attracted the mind of Rishi Shringa and even embraced him as they bid goodbye. And Rishi Shringa was feeling something's happening in my heart. Something is happening in my body. And this is foreign. I, I, I don't want this feeling. It is, it is contaminating. It's polluting. But at the same time, somehow 
he lost his heart in friendship to these girls. Now these girls were thinking, if Vibhandaka, the great sage, comes here, he will curse all of us. So let us leave before he comes back. They left. They did their job and they left. Now as they left, for the next 24 hours, Rishi Shringa was only thinking of these girls, only thinking on when could be another opportunity when he could meet them. His mind became restless, his heart became inflicted with this desire to meet. And the next day, when his father Vibandaka left the hermitage to collect some firewood for their sacrifice, Rishishringa went to that same spot where he met the girls the previous day. And guess what? The girls were there. The girls looked at Rishishringa and said, Oh Rishishringa, yesterday we spent time with you in your hut, in your hermitage. Why not today you come and spend time in our hermitage? Rishishringa said, yes, I will be very happy. This will be a great fortune. And the heart had already gotten attracted to um, the girls. The girls attracted Rishishringa and got Rishishringa to the capital city of Anga. And as soon as Rishishringa stepped into this capital, it started to rain. This was the power of his celibacy, that the drought which was caused by the loss of code of conduct, violation of code of conduct or some uh, improper behavior of the king, the whole city which was under drought, lack of water, now was filled with torrents of rain just by the stepping in of a great sage as Rishishringa. King Romapad was very happy. Valmiki Muni describes in these pages that Romapad, King Romapad was very happy and now he was thinking, oh, oh, Rishishringa has come here and rain has made its way into my kingdom. But now very soon Rishishringa's father, the great sage Vibhandaka, who is the celebrated son of Kashyapa Muni, will curse me and destroy my kingdom by his Brahminical potency. How do I protect myself? Well, let me just ask Rishishringa. How do I protect myself? Look, you came here on your own accord. I didn't call you. You came. But now I feel your father will have a problem. Because you came here and you have seen everyone. He may curse me. How do I protect myself? The ministers whispered, why not give the daughter Shanta in marriage? In that way, Rishishringa becomes your son-in-law and Vibhandaka and you become in-laws and he will never curse someone who is the father-in-law to his son. And in this way, King Romapad, whose kingdom was flooded with torrents of rain, gave his daughter Shanta in marriage to Rishishringa and Rishishringa was completely uh, in, in accordance, in agreement to this proposal. Please remember, it is Sumantra speaking all of this to Dasharat Maharaj about what Sanat Kumar had spoken this past time. And then Sanat Kumar spoke in that past time. Dasharat Maharaj will hear to this, will listen to this past time and feel inspired. If I can call Rishishringa into my kingdom too, just like how King Romapad called, and King Romapad did not have water, but when Rishishringa stepped in, it started to rain. Similarly, Dasharat Maharaj also will have this idea of bringing in Rishishringa with his newly wed wife Shanta into the kingdom of Ayodhya. And as a result, Ayodhya will flourish with the, that, with the fulfillment of that desire that Dasharat Maharaj always had in his heart. Sumantara continued, O King Dasharat, I feel you should make your way to the kingdom of Romapad, King Romapad, and beg him if he can give his son-in-law, Rishishringa, into your kingdom so that he can become the sage, he can become the priest who can perform the Putra Kameshti Yadnya, the great sacrifice which will invoke a son in the future. Because Sanat Kumar has said that, O King Dasharat, you will have children in the future and that sacrifice will be performed by you. The Putra Kameshti Yadnya on the power of the blessings of Rishishringa, the great sage, the husband of Shanta, the son-in-law of the great king Romapad.
listening to this, Dasharat Maharaj feels inspired. Dasharat Maharaj with his queens, with his ministers, with his royal procession, goes to the kingdom of Maharaj Romapad. Going to the kingdom of Maharaj Romapad, Dasharat Maharaj spends many days just sitting and talking to King Romapad because they're also, it's described, they also happen to be best of friends, Dasharat Maharaj and Romapad Maharaj. So both these kings, they spend time talking to each other. And finally, after many days, Dasharat Maharaj speaks his heart out. And he says that just like the drought circumstance in your kingdom was solved by the stepping in of Rishishringa, I am looking for a son because I have everything except a nice, noble, royal son who can continue the Surya Vansha, the Raghu Vansha. O King Romapad, I was thinking, if you can give your son-in-law, Rishishringa, along with your daughter, Shanta, let them come into Ayodhya and let them be the head of the priests who can perform this sacrifice. I will be very grateful if that can be done. King, King Romapad immediately agrees. And there's a royal procession bringing the great sage Rishishringa, his wife, Shanta, because she is the princess. She is the daughter of the great King uh, Romapad bringing this couple into Ayodhya. And as Dasharat Maharaj makes the arrangements, he sends his ministers, please tell the residents of Ayodhya to have a grand celebration. All the citizens should come out. There should be a big celebration, big decoration to welcome King Rishishringa because he is the solution to all problems. He will give us what we are lacking. Ayodhya Vasis, the residents of Ayodhya are celebrating this conch shell, this trumpet blowing, there are drums being beaten, this flower petal decoration, there's so many different colors which are thrown in the air. There's scented, sacred, uh, scented water all through the roads. There are thorns or mango leaves decorated outside the house because all the residents of Ayodhya, they are also waiting for a son who can take over the royal kingdom of Dasharat Maharaj after Dasharat Maharaj's rule. Rishishringa, along with his wife Shanta, along with Dasharat Maharaj, his wives, the ministers, they return back to Ayodhya in a royal procession. And what happens after that, we will see on Monday. So this is the weekend cliffhanger. We will see in the coming week, the holy auspicious appearance of Sri Ramachandra as described in the pages of the Balkan of Valmiki Ramayana. Thank you all very much. It is my continued joy and good fortune to see each one of you uh, every single day. But I must admit, we are 50% done. It is only a 10-day Katha this time, so we are done with five days. We will see you another week, starting from Monday to Friday. Over the weekend, please stay safe. Keep smiling, each one of you. Please smile as you have your videos on. So nice and so inspiring to see each one of you participating, happy. I pray at the lotus feet of Shishi Radha Madan Mohan, the presiding deities of ISKCON Atlanta. I pray at the lotus feet of Gaur Nithai, Jagannath Baldev Subhadra, and Sita Ram Lakshman Bhakta Hanuman. May all of you live a long life, happy life in Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. We will see you day after tomorrow. That's on Monday. Hare Krishna.